You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. Joining me today is Mr. Rob Burdick and myself, Paul, co-hosting this episode of Ask Drone You. Welcome, guys. Welcome to a very friendly show. We're excited today. We're going to be clarifying um, our tethered unmanned aircraft subject to Part 107. So if you have a tethered drone, does it fall under Part 101 or does it fall under Part 107? Hmm. Well, recently in the Facebook UAS group, I was shocked horrified, not really surprised by the fact that even when I had posted the answer to this question direct from the summary of part 107 from the FAA, there were still, Rob, 40 comments of people's opinions that were just... That were contradictory. Completely wrong. And it's like, hello, like we just posted the, like, here's the answer straight from the FAA. Maybe it's wishful thinking. I, I, I don't know what it is. It made me think of, uh, um, what was the guy's name who wrote the book, uh, Mr. Hill, um, Graham Hill, Nathan Hill, about the opinions. Hill, quote, on opinions. It's like opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth. Everyone has a <laughs> flock of opinions ready to be wished upon anyone who go. will accept them. If you are influenced by opinions when you reach decisions, you will not succeed in any undertaking. Well, that's unfortunate because there are a lot of people that I'm sure were going to rely on those opinions. It, yeah, and it's really just fascinating to me, though, because it just show, kind of showcases the environment that we live in today. And that is the people who take the time to really dig into sources when they're looking for information and making decisions. Those people are going to make educated decisions. Those people are going to make decisions that they can feel confident in. Mm -hmm. And chances are they're going to make these educated decisions that will put them on a better path towards life. So before we get into today's show, which is talking about tethered unmanned aircraft, I just remind you guys, always provide the benefit of the doubt. Always look for sources. Always look at the legitimacy of sources. And I think it's really important to, you know, never trust, you know, what you read on the internet because a lot of people just want to gain credibility, notoriety, and authority. Yeah, it's never been more true, obviously, than now to be very, very careful given all the information on the internet, the majority of which I would suspect is not accurate. Yeah. You can find accurate info. True, true. All right. But on a happier note, uh, for many of you know, (laughs) Drone You Fly In is coming up. And we actually still have some spots available. Yes, I know it is crazy. There are spots available. Uh, but I wanted to read you guys a testimonial that came up in the Drone You community when I was talking about the fly-in yesterday. And uh, John said he really, really hates that. Uh, I'll just read his quote instead of paraphrasing it. Really, really hate I can't make it this year. The single experience propelled me into the success I'm enjoying today, living the drone life. I showed up last year with less than five hours of flight time and fewer than 55 total flights when the 2017 fly-in started. Today, according to my air data account, I have 531 flights, nearly 76 hours of flight time, 92 hours of log time, 692 miles flown, 18,700-ish photos taken, (laughs) and 255 videos recorded. Being at the 2017 fly-in changed everything for me. I hope it has the same impact on those able to attend this year, especially new attendees. Beautiful. I yeah, think that's it, it is a killer. great time and there is room and you're not going to want to miss it. Seriously, if you can make it, it's worth it. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. So check it out. Sign up, droneyouflyin.com. It is not too late. Uh, and we're another thing we're adding this year too are instruction pamphlets for every single exercise you do. So in case you didn't hear the instructor for whatever reason or you're bad at hearing, or uh, you now have everything you need yeah, to compete. Absolutely. Well, and you can look at it before you come. You can have an idea of what's going on before you get there, which I think will be very helpful. There's more exercises than ever before. There's a full extra day of flying this year versus last year, which is really, really cool. So 
It's going to be fun. It's going it to be fun. It is going to be fun. Right. Anyway, well, let's get into today's question, but sign up because I want to see you there. So if you haven't given up on having a great time, fun adventure, really attending almost 10 different classes in three days, you are going to love the fly-in. Besides, you want to hear some of the speakers that we're having there? I'll just be really, really quick. Okay, Pix4D is coming to talk about how to get the best accuracy possible in your maps. NTSB is showing how they're using accident reconstruction. We're actually even going to have a panel from some of the members of the FAA DAC and ARC committee on site. You're not going to want to miss it. So check it out, droneyouflyin.com. All right, today's question brought to you by dynexdrones.com. Check them out if you're trying to get your business off the ground. You need to buy some drones. You need to upgrade your drones. Check them out. They've got some great deals. They can actually help you buy a drone with no money down, and you can make payments on it, which might not be for everybody, but if that is what's keeping you from getting into the game, they might be a good option for you. And if you do go try them out, be sure and use the coupon code drone you save the number 25 and you'll get 25 bucks off your order. So check them out dynexdrones.com. My name is Colgate Spanks. I'm a beginning drone pilot. What is the classification of a drone or a, something such as a spark if it is tethered to the pilot? That is it is not free flying. Is it still considered a drone? Or is it more along the lines of a balloon on a string? Thank you for the question. You know, it is an interesting question. And actually, the way that he phrased that question, particularly at the very end, the documentation speaks specifically to that question, which I I find interesting. But, you know, one other point that I would make before you really get into the, the meat of the answer is that it doesn't change the fact that it's unmanned, right? So... I think it remains a drone. But nonetheless, what does the FAA say about that question? All right. So here it is. If you download the Drone Pilot Field Kit, you go to page 88, or it's uh, page 80 of the summary. The FAA did, however, so I am reading this. I just Opinions aside, I am reading this directly from the FAA. All right. The FAA did, however, receive several comments asking for clarification as to which types of operation are indeed subject to Part 101. The Next Gen Air Transportation Program at NC State University and three individuals asked whether tethered powered unmanned aircraft meet the definition of unmanned free balloons and kites, which are subject to Part 101. FAA regulations define a balloon as a quote-unquote lighter-than-air aircraft that is not engine-driven and that sustains flight through use of either gas buoyancy or an airborne heater, end quote. A kite is defined as, quote, a framework covered with paper, cloth, metal, or other material intended to be flown at the end of a rope or cable and having as its only support the force of wind moving past its surfaces. Based on these definitions, a small unmanned aircraft that uses a powered system for actions such as propulsion or steering is not a balloon or a kite and is not subject to Part 101. Hmm. Hold on, there's more. But wait... Oh, wait, no, they were just talking about the weight of tethered operations. But also, even if you are a tethered balloon, they are not allowed in the DC FRZ because it even says tethered balloons, agriculture, crop dusting, model aircraft, rocket operations, float plane operations, and UAS are prohibited in the DC FRZ zone. So Hmm. that's specific to DC. If that's you. Long story short, a tethered drone is not a balloon. A tethered drone is not a kite, thus it is not part to 101. So if anyone is out there saying that they have a tethered drone and you don't need a drone license or a certification because it doesn't fall under FAA regulations, they're lying to you. They're full of and they're probably ugly too. So <laughs> we'll bleep that out. Don't worry. Make it fun. Make it like a so, make it like a Top Gun sound. You know, like yeah, danger. So, so you know, like, <laughs> that's a great idea. I'll let Creel know. I am dangerous. So why? Just out of curiosity, why would anybody want to tether their drone? What, uh, what are uses for that? Law, uh, persistent surveillance systems. Okay. Uh, I, or excuse me, is it called WASP? So for security wide reasons. Area persistent surveillance systems. Yeah, it's like a weird wasp thing. Wide area systematic persistent surveillance. 
That's something. Anyway, here's the idea, right? Uh, and we, I mean, we talked about this. I wanted to do a podcast on this a long time ago, a really fully produced one uh, to make a point about how drones are awesome, but how they could also be really bad in the age of, of digital privacy. But imagine um, the, what we called and worked on with um, Sandia National Labs uh, was a project called Project Gridlock. And what it is, is essentially if a drone was tethered uh, to a... Think of uh, almost like an electricity box, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's a place where you can power the drone, uh, get communications, weather data information. It's its own little weather station. It's also a landing station. Now, if I had a bunch of drones interconnected all over the city, flying at 400 feet that were tethered to the ground, I now have real-time data across the entire city. So if I'm taking a picture over, let's say, 500 cameras that are tethered to the ground, but they're flying and I've covered the whole city, I can follow a car leaving the bank and go back to their house. I can literally create patterns. I can create machine learning to figure out what type of person someone is. I could create machine learning to figure out if someone had literally cheated on their wife over and over again. I mean, the amount- (laughs) once. Yeah, or once. Um, I could literally tell you who robbed the bank, when, where they went, who they picked up, and who they dropped off. I mean, like- It's crazy it's not being used yet, actually. It actually is being used. Okay. It is being used right now. But pervasively? It is illegal for the U.S. government to surveil U.S. citizens with this technology, but there are cities that are using this technology, just not on drones. They're using it in Cessnas. We did a story on this, and Hmm. it's Baltimore... That, that was it. It's Baltimore that piloted the program that is actually using data, this data in court right now against criminals to say, we can prove this is where you started, this is where you ended, this is where you were, whole nine yards, you can't lie. And right? the evidence is being allowed in, I hope? Well, we're still waiting to hear back that's on that. Still that is being determined. It's still being determined because it's something that's so new because is there, you know, and the ULC was saying aerial trespass, uh, you know, trying to get that done, which by the way, thank you to every company, including DJI and other companies that wrote uh, the ULC uh, to say that this is a horrible idea. We did a podcast on that a while ago. But long story short is Tethered drones through wide area persistence surveillance can provide an unprecedented level of data security. Um, And what I mean about data security is data that can provide security for your company Mm -hmm. against losses, damages, uh, fraudulent behavior, uh, individuals, and so much more. Um, Now, where this can get really, really scary, and actually it was in the paper this morning, and why I want to mention it, is China actually just developed an AI technology that uses facial recognition through a network of cameras across the globe that can literally figure out where you are based on your face. So you want to talk about how data security and privacy is so important. This is the prime example. And people aren't aware of these issues unless they're like visualized in front of you. And uh, that Netflix show, um, uh, Altered Carbon, is just such a perfect example Mm. of the future as it's progressing today and how problematic it can be if not regulated properly. Yeah, no, and and the problem, I think, is that the hands that that gets into, right, and it just gives people too much control. The people that are controlling that technology have too much control over the citizens. It is kind of scary. It's a little freaky. It reminds me, actually, so, like, one of these, like, unique, uh, it's the same concept just done in a totally different way, and I know this is going to sound really weird, but at least you can, like, go watch it right now and be like, oh, my gosh, that's how the system works. If you go watch Batman, The Dark Knight (laughs) Rises, I'm just saying, Batman, Um, I'm just saying, Rachel, that uh, what they do is they put sonar in phones, and in the scene, um, Batman is, is saying to Lucius Fox, he's saying, you know, I've put this sonar technology in all the f- cell phones across Gotham, and now I'm able to get a map of literally the entire area in real time everywhere and can hunt down people, places, things based off of sound. So instead of it being based off of pictures, it's being based off of sound. Hmm. Now, it's really interesting because Lucius Fox says to him, no one man should have this power and this level of data and detail about everyone's intimate life, blah, blah, blah. And you know, Batman says, that's why I'm giving you the power. And we're using it for this one purpose. And when it's done, type in your name and the whole system could deletes itself. So, I interesting. mean, yeah. You got to understand these metaphors are right in front of us. It's just how much are we willing to pay attention? Yeah. Well, in the one, so 
gosh, there's so there's just so much to go into. But isn't with it this. a fun conversation? No, it's a it's a great conversation. I'm just thinking it could go so deep. Yeah. I don't know that we should even get started right Some now. Some people may not think it's fun, but you got to have well, these conversations. Yeah, you got to think about is there what's the good, what's the bad. Look, fire can be used to burn your house down, and fire can be used to heat the house. It just depends on how you use it. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I, again, my concern is who has control over these technologies. That's what really concerns me because typically, for for whatever reason, the sort of human nature it ends up in the wrong hands. Do you want a, the honest answer or always? <laughs> in my opinion, and I mean, you guys correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like more and more that corporations are in power rather than governments. And I say that, and I give the example of um, Peter Thiel, right? You know who Peter Thiel is. He's also the backer to uh, Tony Robbins. He wrote the mm. book Unshakable, uh, helped finance Facebook, like the whole nine yards. They're building their own new country off the coast of Tahiti that completely floats on water, has its own government, its own sets of rules, and is trying to be completely sustainable. I think that as many corporations that can be bad, there are corporations that are also good. Sure. And they're trying to create a new environment in which a lot of these uh, battles and regulatory hurdles don't exist. And that is bad and it's good. Again, there's two sides to that story. But I think the answer to your question is who's really ultimately in control of that power? I, I mean, I always say society is ultimately in control, which they are. But if we don't act, we can fall behind and lose. Mm -hmm. I think the ultimate power is actually up to corporations. And another per perfect example Apple just released their new iOS 11.4 that blocks this device that has been sold to police officers to unlock your phone to get evidence off of it. Hmm. And so it's a cat and mouse game of yeah, sorts. Yeah, and even though the Supreme Court has said your phone is a personal device, you are entitled to privacy, they can't go through it. Right. They're going through it. So Apple said, okay, you guys want to play games? We're going to play games too. And they just shut off that vulnerability. Interesting. And it just goes to show society said, hey, we're not going to do this. The corporation ultimately made the final decision because they controlled the device. Right. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. That's it's, the world we live in. It is. These conversations are important because even though they may lead to negative connotations or positive connotations, if we don't have these discussions, how are we ever going to really understand the power, the lack of power? Or the influence it would have. Well, and that's just it in the sense that when we talk about these things, and the one, one of the reasons I don't go too deep into it, because you're right, I think ultimately society and citizens should have the power. But I'm going to say we, we don't exercise that power. Agreed. We become mindless. And it always makes me kind of think of that um, that Dave Matthews band. I don't know if you know who that is. Love Dave Matthews <laughs> They're band. They're fantastic, but they had that song called Ants Marching. <laughs> I love that song. It's a dun, great song. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Dun, dun, but it's dun. also kind of a depressing song in the sense that <laughs> it is though you're it's right it's totally depressing because they're just describing society and citizens just kind of marching along through their day every day and not paying attention to stuff like this and trying to do something about it because if enough people stand up talk try to do something about it it can change True. there we go <laughs> I love it. No, no, no. <laughs> it's so true, though. Oh, if you watch the lyrics on this, like, ugh. Really? All right. Well, on that bombshell, she that is going to do it. wakes up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. I apologize for that. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Don't be afraid to subscribe, like, and share with a friend. It really helps us. So thank you. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.